Welcome to Tom and Tides of Numlera. We continue in the Valley of Dead Heroes. Where's the game? There's the game. <sighs> Welcome on this beautiful, beautiful, totally not sunny, and that's good so that my head doesn't explode from all the brightness. Um, we are flying to the Valley. The Valley of Dead Heroes, as the safe, game, safe game's called. Let's go to the Valley. And last time I almost already stepped into the valley, but then I realized we haven't done everything we can in Sarkos Cliffs. For example, oh, which I didn't expect because I thought we would have more time, would have had more time for the Servant of the Tides, but we can only do this here. So this is what we're going to do first and then and everything looks fine. And then we will go to the Valley of Dead Heroes, or fly, rather, uh, with an airship. And everybody loves airships. I, I especially do love a tight piece of airship. Um, it's called Oom. Inspect it when I can. Maybe I should take Oom from the labyrinth. Here comes the board which means I have to get... I have to kick one of them out of my party. Which I... Which I'd rather not do. <sighs> I don't like... Um removing people from my party. Maybe we'll just not do that and say fuck Oom. Oom is, Oom is a cute creature, but I think we, will, we won't have anything to do with Oom in this playthrough, as I've got to know him before, alone, without all of you nice little viewers. Was das Leben? Almost. Ah, yeah, I almost wet myself. Damn. Okay, okay. Then let's let's just think that it's totally okay not to complete that quest and go with Master Renio into the Valley of Dead Heroes. Okay, okay, let's do that. Master Renyo turns from his observation of the laborers and asks, How may I assist you? I need to fly to the Valley of Dead Heroes. Excellent timing. My vessel will be departing shortly, bored at your leisure. He leans in closer. I should also warn you that we won't be able to retrieve you from the valley. We never tarry there. Its energies are not good for our ship's engines. I'm ready, let's go! Very well, my friend. We will be on our way momentarily. Nicenstein. <gasps> you two lovies, you've come temporarily. No, a sign. Come with me. I switched some words there. A group of tough-looking thugs approach from behind you. Leading them is Riz, who gives Tybe a mocking salute. Hello, Tiber. Leaving town? My friends and I would like the money you owe us first. He takes an involuntary step back and addresses the thugs. I don't know what Riz has told you, but I promise you I was never paid for the job. Hello, and Captain Greenberg! I don't have any money, and beating me won't change that. Don't believe him, help me. He's never spoken the truth in his life. Tiber turns to you, pleading. Lad, please. I'm all, about tr all, all out of tricks. Say something, get me out of this. Welcome, Captain Greenbear. Thanks for showing up. Um, I know you're pretty proficient in the English language, so you... But uh, anyone else also has the option. You can type in German if you want, or in English, or maybe even some Latin in, in Spanish. Maybe I can figure that out with my um, some years of, of uh, education there. Um, apart from that, every time... There is an option like in here, 
And I think I've told this to you already, but I just like to repeat myself. Um, you can choose the choices while I voice the voices. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't eat cheese, so this doesn't help me at all. But <laughs> isn't that a mixture of French and Est? Est is also, I don't know if it's real French, or uh, Est is Latin, isn't it? I think it is. And a la table <laughs> sounds... A, a table? Ah, uh, phew! There are... <laughs> so, okay, French, Latin, Spanish and English in one sentence. Not bad, not bad at all, Captain Green Bear. La table. La. I'm not sure if A ah is the correct preposition. Is it preposition? Shouldn't it be N? I don't know. I really... Uh, Spanish is, is... Is a thing of the past and I've... I was good at it. But then I just didn't continue with Spanish. So I have no idea what I'm talking when I'm... Talking about when I'm talking Spanish. Um, okay, so, I don't like to attack people, I'm a nice guy, let's just try to intimidate them. Captain Tiber is under my protection. Do you want to face the wrath of the changing guard? <clears throat> Ooh, Elugon is much more intimidating than I am. And Eretus even more so. Okay, Eretus, do, do your best. At 5%, that should be enough. And it is! That's the success sound. Riss sneers and looks back at his companions. He's not the changing guard. The changing guard is ten feet tall and... He pauses as he sees the others backing up and slinking away. Hey! Where are you going? I'm telling you! He's not the changing guard! They beat a hasty retreat and Riss chases after them. Come back here, you guards! Thanks for intervening back there. Riss and his friends caught me unawares. Me, of all people. No problem, Tiber. I still like you. Uh, do I? I'm not sure about Tiber. Mm -hmm. It's still there, he says, his eyes flicking away from yours. It's just... What do you do when a friend turns on you? It paralyzes one somewhat. Uh, as I was saying, we should be on our way. He looks nervously around. I hope you have no other surprises for me. All here then? The wind is right for us. Let's sail, friends. He begins shouting commands to his crew and they cast off the mooring lines. The airship pushes away from the spire and the city of your birth falls away below you. Le fromage est à la table. It sounded like clock's ticking. I wonder what that was. Uh, maybe I'm imagining things. Making a note. Valley of the Heroes. Valley of the Heroes. <sighs> this looks like trouble. Even as he stalks toward you, for a moment it appears as if the man is unaware of your presence. He stops in front of you. Rocking ever so gently, he stares right through you, murmuring under his breath. Chanting or insane rambling, you draw close and notice the scars he bears upon his face. Then his gaze matches yours and he suddenly grows silent. He sees you now. His eyes flicker across your face and pause on your tattoo. <coughs> Mm. He bows, his movements stiff and halting. Then, with blinding speed, his hand sh uh, not shakes, snakes out and brushes a speck of dust from your shirt. The hand is gone before you can react. Uh, I am Clean Car, and these are my associates. You are in the Valley of Dead Heroes. His jagged smile is rimmed with blood. Two memorialists have escaped us. You will find them. We need them. I don't think so. 
Why do we want to find them? I'll help you find them. <laughs> As I said, you can choose the choices, but if you don't want to, my dear viewers, I think I will play for time and ask him, why do you want to find them? Just taking a sip of water. That's all the time you have, I'm sorry. Okay. Why do you want to find them? He hisses out a long exhalation of breath. We must open the endless gate. Find the missing memorial mem memorialists. Sorry for stuttering. But... Kiyotawa is the one that murdered... Um, Someone in the underbelly, if you recall. Uh, the children of the Endless Gate are a sub faction of the Dendra Ahur, the people that eat other people and, by the, in this way, um, take th their memories. But only dead people. So the Dendra Ahur are nice cannibals. The children of the Endless Gate seem to be bad cannibals, if that makes sense. Uh, why must you open the endless gate? He smiles beatifically, exposing his bloody gums. It is what we are called to do. And who are we to disobey the call when it comes? Are you children of the endless gate? Do you know Kiyotawa? He looks at you suspiciously. I am not familiar with her, though one of the brethren did come to us recently from Sagos Cliffs. Perhaps Motley will know. You can inquire of him in the necropolis as soon as you find our missing friends. Okay. Lie or intimidate? Lie or intimidate? Shroxy? Captain? Cute without E? Anyone? If not... I have to make a decision of my own, which I dislike. Um, the intimidation worked with um, with Riz. We could just lie to them. Let's lie to them. Let's not make enemies right now. He is holding up his finger as if to threaten you for not complying, and then he realizes what you've said. Oh. Then we would be glad of your assistance. The memorialists are somewhat nearby. We can smell them. Go find them and bring them to us. I pray to the gate for your success. There are some things here. Oh, loot! Yes. Let's loot. The first thing you should do is loot. Take all. These mooring posts are to keep ships from dif drifting off, or at least they were back when ships used to stop here. Wooden slats have been cobbled with ancient machine parts to create makeshift cargo pads. Though still functioning, they look like they've been cast aside and neglected. Hello! You missed the party yesterday! Yes, there was some big party! You, But how do you know? Did you watch the stream? Just... In the, um, how do you call it? The, the VOD? Yeah, Captain Greenbear, who is also here, or at least he was here, um, got some of his crew together, and they, we had a nice chat, and they followed the shit out of my channel, and I was very glad, and very happy, and I still am. And he's still here. I watched the video tomorrow pre-work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I watched the video tomorrow. I pre-work. There was there was some time <laughs> problems there in that sentence. Yeah. Um. Today. Ah. Very good of you, Shiroxi. Very good. Yes. Quite quite the party. Quite the party. Um. Let's see yes. if there are now. if they are around the memorialists. You see faint traces of footprints in the dust. Closer examination reveals that someone must have stopped in front of this alcove for a moment. Investigation turns up no sign of any hidden compartments. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going. You check the empty alcove thoroughly for hidden doors or panels, but your investigation reveals nothing. Of course. You peer into this alcove. It's deep enough to hide people, but it is strange, strangely empty. After a thorough investigation, you step away. Why it is? Why is it strange that it's empty? I'm ready. The alcove is vacant. It's only inhabitant the blowing dust of the valley, though it appears to have been built to hold bodies. Ah, that's why. It is curiously empty. Oh yeah, I mean it's a graveyard where we're at, so that now I see why that's weird. Um, good question, Ashiroxy. I um was visiting his YouTube channel from many years ago, and there he was streaming Risen and Gothic. And maybe even Alex? I don't know. So, he was streaming uh, some Piranha Bytes games, and that's why I think the Gothic 2 category was um, where I found me. All right. Ooh. Peering behind, behind the sheet rock, you see only a faint etching in the stone. Almost worn away by the passage of the years, it reads, Sanity slipping. The tombs will hold my salvation. Oh. I don't think it's the O from the Fifth Eye Tavern. But I don't remember. Sanity the tombs will hold my salvation. Yeah, let's hope he was I'm successful. Going. Or uh, she, or it. You move the planks aside and get nothing more than a splinter for your trouble. The unmarked cliff wall is all that you can see. I took this for last because I knew they were here. Or at least I think so. I'm ready. I'm ready. Steady go. You pull the planks back. A crawl space extends behind them with two small alcoves recessing the walls. They are remnants of grave markers and memorials from ancient times. One seems shallow. The other has been blocked by rubble falling from above. Both of them appear to have been built to hold bodies, but neither are occupied. Yet. Uh, yet. You can see a disturbance in the dust of the crawl space. Someone came by this way, at least. Perhaps they're still here. Perception. I think I am the most... Uh, percept... Oh, uh, it's not Eritus? Um Come on, 70%? I mean, I can retry if I if I fail. I assume, at least. You peer deep into the gloom. The dust has been more than disturbed. You see footprints. After a few minutes, your diligence is rewarded. There is a third alcove at the back of the crawl space, hidden behind a great stone slab. The slab is held up by a stone the size of a human head, creating a small gap hardly half a meter high. You crouch down and peer through the gap. Two people are uh, hiding in the space behind it. Risen! But that's not your first time you've played Risen, is it? Captain Greenbear? One of them, a bearded man with a kind expression, whispers to you. Old friend, a friend you be. My name is Beltrax. This is Ronos Kaisu. Those damned cultists gave chase to us. Ronos knew of the small sepulchre in which we have hidden, but we have nowhere left to run. They will murder us if you reveal our position. Please, says Ronos. Beltrax has but a visitor to this place. He has no part in our struggle with the children. Tell him that we have fled and that you couldn't find us. Sweet potato with seed case and fizzy. So goat's cheese and peach, rosemary and thyme and honey. <laughs> Then it won't be as you want it to be. <laughs> yes, uh, I know the feeling, Shiroxy. When you, when you are sure that you must know the word, but it just won't pop up. I know how you feel. Um, cooking a new expression: sweet potato, goat's cheese, peach, rosemary, thyme, honey. I mean, how? 
How should this not taste good, Shiroxi? This sounds delicioso. And I, I think I think it would be a success. And I, I mean, even if you just put it all together in just helter skelter, it, it will taste very well, I think. Very good. Risen is similar to Gothic. Uh, yes, it is. Risen is um, what the Gothic developers did after Gothic 3 and after Gothic 3 was panned by many, many uh, critics. And when it wasn't as successful as the first two Gothic games, they, I think Joe Wood, or at least the publisher, um, got the rights to the Gothic series and another Gothic game. And that was the end of Piranha Bytes making Gothic games. And that's why they did um, Risen and Alex. And I don't think there are more Piranha Bytes games, but yeah. Risen. There's Risen 1, 2, and 3, I think. I don't know how good they are, and I've never played any kind uh, any Risen game, but I'm very I'm very much looking forward to it. And I've never played Alex either, but I heard good things about all of them. Yeah. And Risen is a pirate adventure. I guess um, Piranha Bytes thought that the pirates in the uh, Night of the Raven add-on for expansion for um, Gothic 2 was, they were cool, so I guess they just wanted to continue with their pirates. You don't like pirates? The heat lowers my IQ to, okay, I, I know how you feel. I am also, I don't like the heat, I don't like the warmth, but outside there's, why am I, that's my IQ 80 voice. I don't know why that is. Um. I think there there was were some um, construction workers outside the window. So this time I'm streaming with a closed door, a closed window. But at least it's not that he, um, that hot and sunny. But yeah, uh, you don't like pirates. I I do like Monkey Island, but I don't like the. Or I don't. I, I've come to think that I don't like the romantization of pirates because in reality I think pirates were very, very, very bad people. They were not um, like the, the thief class in fantasy role-playing games and they were rapists, looters, pillagers, murderers and all of the above. And maybe it's... Maybe they weren't heroes. But I, th yeah, Black Sail and Taboo as a series, and both were hard for me to watch. I don't know any of them. So, um, whoa. Um, Shroxy, as I think you don't know what is happening here right now in the game, I'll just now will choose the choice, uh, pick the choice. Of course, I will cover... Um, no, I want them to cover that track so I can deal with the cultists. I I think this is... This is the most evil option the game has given me so far. Boom! You have her gratitude. Good luck, friend. They watch you leave. I'm go Still there? Fine. That was weird. Okay, uh, clean car. I don't think there are people are here. Gate cultist. Found the memorialist to taste Liberation's blade. Find the memorialist, friends. Bring them to account. Clean car. Have you found them yet? Have you? going to bring them to you or oh, I can't find 
I mean, it's just this... On it. Why don't I have any other options? I think... I thought that the first time I could lead them on the wrong trail. And if I just go past you? No, this won't work. Where do you think you're going? There are only two ways out of here. The first is to find those memorialists. The second... Well, you won't like the second, but you'll discover it immediately if you try to get past us again. <laughs> Good question. Um, what if they slipped by you? And they did not. And neither will you. Find them! Uh, Klinkar? I can't find them! He smiles his bloody smile. You will bring them here. You will. Um... I didn't find them. Um, Tybia, 65. Uh, and the other options? The same, okay. And Intimidation. Oof. Oof. Oof da. Tatere. Okay, I looked, I didn't find them. Mm. Tybia, 85%, that should work. And it did! Nice. He studies you closely, his eyes narrowing. You seem to speak truly. Very well. We will press this issue no further. His eyes linger on your tattoo and he sighs angrily. Pass along then. Fui! Well, my friend, I have no idea why you're so generous with your time and your life, but your bravery is beyond reproach. I have some small familiarity with the weapons I carry, but I'd rather not try my prowess against three of them at once, and I vowed to Ronos that I'd keep him safe. I do not know how it is that they left without doing you harm. Is there any chance you might tell me? I told them I couldn't find you. <laughs> that... A bold lie! I'm impressed they took you at your word. I was sure they knew where we'd hidden, despite our precautions. You have my undying thanks. His companion is a slight, nervous man in a hooded robe of blue and white. He bows. I'm sorry you had to face those cultists we hid and, well, he bows, a small tremble in his hands as he does so. I have a favor to request. Those cultists, the children of the Endless Gate, they have overrun the Valley of Dead Heroes. They slaughter the visitors, they hound us, the memorialists, and have brought horror to every corner of this ancient place. Please, you've shown your mettle in dealing with these murderers. I beg of you, please, find a way to make them move on. I'll do it. I'll remember that. He sags with relief. Thank you, friend. The coming of the children has been a relentless nightmare for us. For us. I wish you the best of luck. I'm looking for the tomb of the first cast off. I do not know that tomb. You might be able to find it yourself at the entrance to the great necropolis. You can enter it up there. He points off in the distance and up and up. The entrance must be in the cliff face somewhere. You must be strong or careful, though, or both. The children are vicious and unpredictable. Hallelujah! <laughs> she rocks it! Sounds like our official war anthem. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah! Tell me about the Valley of Dead Heroes! Well, yeah, or yourself, why not? My true name is Ronos Kaisul of the Memorialists. I came here from Sargus Cliffs to inter my beloved wife. 
That was over a decade ago. I remained because I felt a close connection to the place somehow. When I discovered the name of my true self, I knew this world, this world is the afterlife and the graves here are our own. Now I study the world, the world of the living, hoping to bring others to the enlightenment I reached. Ah, valleys, Tybe says, stroking his mustard. Lovely things, wherever you find them. <laughs> Happy! I charge right like fire glasses screams it. Ah, uh, she rocks it. That's pretty accurate, but I don't say hey, I say hello. So, B+. Plus. Um, tell me about yourself again. So you get that the memorialists lists think that we are all already dead and the ninth world is the afterlife and the tombs here in the Valley of Dead Heroes in the graveyard are our tombs where we are interred. <laughs> uh, tell me about the Valley of Dead Heroes. It has been a burial ground for the world for at least millions of years, yet. And he holds up a finger like a lecturer. Yet we have uncovered no bodies in the valley itself, oh no. Despite all the memorials, obelisks and urns above the ground, we have not been able to find evidence of a single body. Markers exist beyond counting. Some are in scripts we cannot understand. Some are in materials we have never seen. But the bodies themselves lie in a great space beneath the ground. Above the ground, there is no sign of life, none at all, except what we bring with us. The valley is a mausoleum of many prior worlds, a place of stunning sadness, unimaginable pride and great wonder, a true representation of the secrets of the ninth world. Who are the memorialists? We are ordinary people, really, um, people who understand the truth that this world is really the afterlife and that the tombs here are our graves. We maintain the valley so that no name is forgotten, so that everyone can come here and remember their true selves. Once all the tombs have been claimed, we shall see a glorious resurgence of humanity. Likewise, if we allow the names to be forgotten, devastation will sweep across the land. Okay. They are weird. Thanks, Ronos. Bell tracks. What about Cha? Hello again, my friend. How long have the cultists been here? They came to the valley recently, perhaps a month, perhaps only a week or two. Maybe some of them have been here for longer than that. I don't know. The children's arrival was slow and insidious. They didn't make the ruckus they are making now. And then a few days ago, they just went berserk. Just like that. Started abducting and slaughtering and, well, here we are. Again? Nothing. What can you tell me about the valley? It's a vast graveyard of sorts, but you're not going to find any bodies here above ground. You'll need to get to the necropolis to find the real tombs. But to get there, you've got to use the minims, floating pools of light, and when you walk into one, you walk out its twin someplace else. The minims always appear in pairs. My theory is that they are alive, some sort of creatures. Anyway, each pair remains in the same locations for years at a time, I'm told, but sometimes they move or reappear someplace else entirely. As far as I can tell, using them is perfectly safe. Anything more about the minims? Mm, not really, just walk in one, walk out the other. They are the best way to get around the valley, the only way in most cases. Tell me about yourself. This sounds embarrassing when I say it out loud, but I came here to meet up with a sorcerer to quest for a fabled magic board. I haven't met the sorcerer yet, but I did meet a memorialist. She told me about the work they do here, about this being the afterlife, that the names we bore in life are hidden in the valley, and the names of the dead, who she called the truly living. I have to admit, that was about the most cock tribe I'd ever heard. But she said something after. Shadows fall where they will, as they will. Meaning, if we are shadows of other lives, then, like shadows, 
We can control what we are. That stuck with me. What if she's right? He plugs one of the lockets from his bandolier, props it open and reveals a glowing image of a woman. He regards her wistfully. What if she's still alive somewhere? What if this isn't life? If I'm just a shadow waiting to step into the light, what if she's there waiting for me? It's preposterous, I know. You look at it from the outside and it's... But think about it. This world is flat and cold and empty. He looks at the woman's image again. It feels right to believe there's another life, one that feels like living. He closes the locket. So I've been learning more. Ronos was my guide through the valley when those carcass came upon us. We crawled into the a sepulcher behind those boards and, well, you know the rest. Okay, tell me about yourself again. Habada, 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 habada. Safe travels to you, friend, or safer ones at least. All right. All right, that was elegant. Nothing new here. Now let's continue there. I need to talk to you. Oh, you do, elegant. Well, if that is the case, let's chat, Tybia. Huh. You do forget how empty the world is outside of a city's soft and welcoming arms. He sighs, surveying the valley with a dis disappointed air. Mm. City boy, are you? I prefer it out here. Uh, not out here, here. Not quite, he says with a dismissive wave. I've had some of the best times in my life in dirty holes beneath tree trunks. But there's something magical about a soft bed, whoever it belongs to. He adjusts his belt. Anyway, did you need something? Do you know anything about the valley? Not much, he says, looking around. Never been here myself, but I hear it used to be a nice place. Now, I've heard stories. Not the good kind, no. The ones that finish with their toenails were found in a bloody heap. And no, don't ask to hear them. I've just pulled all their endings. Let's just choose safe places to rest, shall we? If there are any. Again about the valley, not much else to sell, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about you. Huh, Tybe, how do you feel? And you've been holding back details about Oveen. That's a fair conclusion. I don't like thinking about him, if I'm being honest. He looks down, visibly marshalling his words. Always said an opinion about my livelihood, did Ovi. I felt like I was disappointing him with every breath I took. He turned all of my victories sour with his little sighs. So I broke it off as clean as I could and wished him well. Last I heard, he was in the bloom of all places, so he's probably not doing as well as I'd hoped back then. should try to see him. He shouldn't have judged you. I think I feel like both. Of course, people may judge you, but don't don't be judgy. And on the other hand, I think he should try to see him again, just to see and kind of forgive himself, but not because Ovi is such a good guy. Hmm. Anyone else has an opinion? About Tybus' lost love, who was judging him everywhere he went, and every th for everything he did. I think I'm for option two. He shouldn't have judged you. Or do you disagree? Three, two, one. I know, when I'm finished in reality, or not on your screen here, with one, the one hasn't even reached your ears because of the delay. So this is how I try to fill that time so that you can get to the one. Okay, two. He shouldn't have judged you. 
Judge is a harsh word. He worried, that's all. He thought I'd come to a bad end, and to be fair, I can't say I haven't. He looks up, avoiding your gaze. As far as he knows, I'm dead. Let's leave it there. Klebst du Heißpistol gedöns? Für Biba? Ähm, für, für, hierfür? Ah, okay. Ja, bin ich. Ähm. What's troubling you? Huh? Tabby says, blinking, oh, well, you caught me, I was thinking about him, Orvin. Some people just won't stay in your past where they belong. He rubs an eye with the heel of his hand. The two of us had a fine time while it, while it lasted. And the more I pick and pluck through these memories, the more I'm thinking it would be nice to see him again, even if he's scowling. That man had a beautiful scowl. I thought you didn't want to see him again. What do you think he's doing in the... I do and I don't. I stretched the truth before. Things didn't end well between us. They ended... Well... They ended about as bad as things can end. And it hurts me to think on it. Light touches a suspicious hint of wetness at the corners of his eyes before he turns completely away from you. I'd rather focus on the happier times, lad. Orvin and I, we made great stories together. Those are the ones that keep me smiling at night. Tell me about some of the happy nights. At uh, times. <laughs> Both, maybe. Gladly. Truth to tell, it'll be good to get some of the memories off my chest and into the open air. Um, I've told you parts and pieces about them. Not sure where to start. Here, were you and Orvin together from the first battle you met? Oh, no. No, our commander separated us after we got out of the brig. <laughs> he didn't want us planning more. Hurt, Heiss. I didn't see Orvin for a handful of years after that, when we both landed in the only mercenary company that have us. He scratches his cheek. You see... Even mercenaries have rules. Don't sell the company's weapons on the side, for one. And don't break your captain's jaw, even if you're obvious and think he's a good humping... He's a rock-humping sadist. So we ended up in the broken riverbed company. Thieves, murderers and drunks with nowhere else to go. But the commander had a good heart. Took the contracts he believed in. Believed in redemption. Well... He signed us up to guard a village trapped between two enemy fronts. Half of us bolted when they saw the armies coming, and the rest when the bombardment started. I saw a big man pinned beneath some rubble and nearly left him anyway before I saw his face. The captain helped me pull Orvi out just before a slug took the top of his head off. That smile never left his face. I like to think he died thinking he turned one life around before the end. <laughs> I was even fast in those days and Ovi was freakish strong. He fought our way off the battlefield trench by trench and kept running after that. He smiles, remembering. It was a week before we realized we were working together in all but name. That's the same story, I think. That's the same one, okay. Uh, how did you fall in love? <laughs> I think, I think we always were, he says, rubbing his eyes. The two of us were never good at spotting the obvious. This was... Just after Robbie started messing with the link rings and turned a potential battlefield into a muddy pit of romantic acrobatics. 
cotton bag. In the early days, the mind-sharing powers of those rings were... Well, they were stronger. And even though we were far from the... <laughs> fighting, we felt the effects. We stood there, watching the magic unfold below and gradually felt each other's thoughts creeping to our heads. Finally, he turns to me and says, He should have said something sooner. And he puts his hand in mine. That's a nice story. Um, the, these rings were used um, for two opposing factions um, in order for, for um, diplomacy. So they can understand each other better, better. And these two factions were just really hot on each other. But somehow, I guess, couldn't express their feelings. And this is the story with those rings here. He raises his hand, looking at his fingers. He grabbed the rings after things died down and tinkered with them over the next few months while we moved from company to company and battle to battle. I never asked why. Fixing things was part of what made him him. Then he gave me one of them. Said he'd be able to keep track of me if we got separated in a scrap and find me if I was in trouble. <laughs> that was RV2. Never thinking things through. You know what I am? I am a pee pee man. So, pee break, be right back. Um, then co we continue our journey through the Valley of Dead Heroes with Tybee and Elegon and Eretus. Uh, 90 seconds. I feel the earth move under my feet. That's what Kitty Cat is listening to right now. Mm. Check, check, mic, mic. Bright, bright, light, light. Um, again, again, again. That's the same story. The damn link rings, I know. <laughs> Into the biggest orgy he's ever seen. Good. Uh, how did the link rings change things between you? Well, they made us closer. And at first there was no downside. We were new lovers with a mental link. I don't think I need to draw you a picture. He massages his knuckles. We were tough fighters on our own. With our thoughts linked, well, we were unstoppable and fooled enough to think that the good times would last. <sighs> Tybe raises his eyes to ours. Because the endless battle was waiting for us. Our orders were to take a hill in the middle of a field of shattered time. Phew. The first time, Orby and I fought our way to the top before something snapped in our gut. And we were back at the bottom, two hours back. We charged up again, and this time one of those fireballs landed right on us. Tybius st studies his bicep. My arm burst apart like rotten fruit, and Orvi died on the spot. I felt his mind wink out inside me, like someone had crushed him in their fist. Then, snap, back down to the bottom of the hill with Orvi still alive, but even with him at my side, I couldn't stop mourning him. We fought for that damned hill, for what felt like lifetimes, dying and dying. Eventually one of our victories stuck and Arvi and I got the hell out there. Arvi took that whole mess as a sign that it was time to create our own company, but I was still mourning for him. I just want to see if... Sometimes when you click on the again option, something else comes up. So that's what I'm doing here. You created your own company. That's a generous assessment. I was against the side by sides from the... F what? I was against the... I guess that's the name for the company? I was against the side by sides from the first, though we were better off on our own. It was one of the first th signs that things were souring between us. He covers his eyes with his calloused hands. But no. Ovi, Ovin, wanted to run things, to choose the fights he thought were worth fighting, and he wanted to drag me along with him. 
Groaning, he lets his hands fall. So, he recruited his people, and I stood on the side, hating every second of it. It all went, went wrong in some no-name village that was burned off the map years ago, he says, looking away from you. He gave me an order I didn't like, so I didn't follow it. And he hit me. <laughs> Said if I wanted to run this side by side so bad, I could have it. And he walked off. He looks back at you, his eyes soft but hooded. Haven't seen him since, and I've missed him every day, if I'm being honest. What ring? The... 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 Other rings? Rings? <clears throat> okay. I want to ask all of these questions. I think, but I think the number four is the one that continues the the conversation without us being able to ask these again. So, what was the order? And I just hope that I can still choose the other options. And if I cannot, I'm very pissed, Tom and Tatsu. I tell you that I'm very pissed. Then. Ah. The ring or the order? Mm. You can help me out if you want to. Pip Howl. I think if I can only choose one of these, I think the ring is what interests me the most. Okay. What happened to the ring? Gave it away. I could still feel him through it, of course. Still touch his mind at will and feel the hurt in him. <laughs> it was better to get rid of it all together. Cleaner. Okay, thank you. Good. I can... I can still choose stuff. Nice. What was the order? Couldn't tell you. And it doesn't matter now. Mm. You're hiding something. What is it? He bows, it, bows his head. <laughs> Have mercy, hey? Telling all of this hasn't been easy, and I know I had a part in what went wrong between us. Shaking his head, he says, and what doesn't matter anyway? The full truth isn't going to mend things between Norvi and me. That time is done. Hmm. Ooh, can I? Ah, damn, no. I thought I could... No, I did I ask all the questions. So, let's talk about something else. Uh, about something else else. Uh, how are you holding up, man? I'm fine, lad. I, I just hope you won't regret our friendship when the time comes to part ways. He stretches. What do you think about Eritus? Isn't he a treasure? Do anything for you he would, do anything for anybody if you made him think it was exciting enough. Are you talking about me? I heard you say exciting. I never stop talking about you, lad. How could I? Eritus. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, elegant, I mean. Serious man, dour even. Probably couldn't have without a diagram. Additional questions, and let's move on. I'm with you until the end, now. Yeah. yeah. Aratus, what do you have to say? Oh. The Valley of Dead Heroes. I like it here. There is absolutely no place we should avoid completely. Wait. Let me just see who that voice is. And why I haven't 
I heard that before, if I'm correctly. If I'm correct. Uh, okay, no. It's not as I thought it was. Okay, okay, okay. I just thought that I noticed a hint of um, Matthew Mercer in there. Um, no place we should avoid completely. That seems unlikely. What seems unlikely? That you like it here? What? Glad to hear it. I think. <laughs> Me too. I'm glad to hear the things I'm saying of my own free will. I'll remember that. Every inch of this valley is packed with adventure. One of his hands comes up, trembling to cover his eyes. Interesting people. Places to explore, like... <laughs> should explore all of it. Even the alcoves. I'm not afraid of any of it. Stop shouting at me! Uh, who's shouting at you? No one! No one is. But his lips are moving when he is finished speaking, framing the same phrase over and over. You watch him until you understand the words. Stop talking, Eretus. Ah, uh, you are right. He sways on his feet, lifts his head to the sky, and his glow returns to full strength. He smiles at you, every trace of his momentary discomfort gone. Of course, we're facing a new adventure. I couldn't be better. Then, his gaze slips from yours to fix on, an em on the empty air, or something only he can see. Why? Why are we here again? This... <laughs> This is my moment, isn't it? Do I get to die here in glorious combat? Oh, am I fighting an army? We're not here because of you. I try not to. Memories tie up the mind. I need to be focused. Ready for action! He casts a long uh, look around, sags and frowns at you. I hate to criticize you, but we should already be having a desperate last stand. It's awfully quiet in here. You should have planned things better. <laughs> I'll try harder next time. That's all I wanted. He says, clasping your arm fondly. Mm -hmm. What do you know about the valley? Well, it's full of dead heroes. I think that's somewhere in the name. On second thought, I didn't die here, so maybe the name is wrong. I just... Grimacing, he holds his head. I remember someone sleeping here in an alcove. <laughs> uh, and then I woke up, and I never saw the alcove again. The end. Heroes are here. Dead ones. Mm. Where's this alcove you mentioned? The easy smile falls from Eretus's face. He looks away. I wasn't talking about any alcove, just alcoves in general. In the Valley of Dead Heroes, I'm not frightened of them. I'm not! Still looking for that alcove. It's not mine, and actually I don't know what you're talking about. I have some questions about you. I'm not surprised. I'm incredibly interesting. What do you want to know? I don't think I've ever seen you sleep. I close my eyes sometimes. <gasps> he says, blinking, he gasps and points at the offending lids urgently. Did you see that? And it again. That does it. He forces both eyes wide with the pads of his thumb thumbs. Now I'll never miss a chance for adventure. See what he does next. <laughs> It's working! <coughs> Tears stream from his eyes. I congratulate myself, but it's probably better if you do it. No one likes to hear a handsome man giving himself compliments. Wait some more. He waits as well, blinded by his, blinded by his tears. Keep waiting. Unexpectedly, convulsively, he blinks and sighs. Oh, it must be instinct. <laughs> You can't fight instincts, you know, except sleeping. 
No time for it, you see? No time at all! But through the glow, you spot the dark bruises under his eyes, the exhaustion in his frantic eyes. Let's talk about something else. He blinks. I have questions about you. Oh no, not you, but how are things between us? Great! I knew we had the same instincts for adventure. What do you think about Tybeer? He has a kind heart. I can't even tell you how often he helps me spend my money. And Elegan? He is really smart and interesting, but I don't understand half of what he says. Okay. Uh, farewell. Oh! Oh, all right. Now, Elegon, you wanted to talk to me. Let's talk. And I hate voicing him because his voice is so deep and my voice really isn't that deep. While we're in the valley, I've got a place I'd like to visit. My village's monument. I haven't been there for a while. Need to pay my respects. It's not far from here, so it's not really out of the way. Let's see what we can do. Appreciate it. What do you know about the valley? Burial place for countless civilizations. Not in the valley itself, but below it. My old day's memorial is here and used to be a to be peaceful, serene, a place where people could come and think for a spell. I've never been to the necropolis. Never really had any urge to see it. <laughs> None of my dead left any remains anyway. <coughs> mm. 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 Uh, if you ask, uh, if you wonder, an aldea is the Numenera term for a village. A village which mostly has one specific Numenera in the village and kind of builds up from that. So some an aldea could, for example, have a source of heat and then it's a, that's how the village comes to be. Or another aldea could have a source of water or the people there could fly or maybe they cannot die, and all these things. Um, and sometimes an aldea is just a village. Uh, let's talk about you. Not exactly my favorite topic. Fine. Ask. Your tattoos. With an old frame. Oh, an old frame. We saw um, diagrams and research about a frame on the desk of his colleague Orth Fong, I think his name was. Uh -huh. Tell me again, tell me again, tell me again. Mm, history. Ah, Orman. I didn't know that. So he's from Orman. Yeah, I asked him all of this before. Oh yeah! Fünf Minuten Feierabend! Whoop whoop! Shiroxy, Shiroxy! Froher Feierabend! Und heute Abend! Schland! Deutschland! Erstes M-Spiel, Germany versus... I don't know who. Aber ich freue mich drauf. 21 Uhr auf dem ZDF. Germany gegen... Was waren das noch? Who, who from you is going to watch the... Um, uh, Euro Cup match? Germany versus... Oh, who's, who are they playing against? Deutschland gegen Nicht Eishockey Ah 
Frankreich, shit, right. Germany versus France. That's tough. <laughs> I think we lose, but, well, hope dies last. Um, I thought you wanted to talk to me. Elegant. Ah, yes, yes, yeah, you wanted to visit the memorial. Now I remember. Uh, how are you holding up? As well as can be expected. Let's talk about your oh, traveling companions. What do you think of Eretus? He certainly... <laughs> I don't know. How do you make a deep voice that sounds natural? <clears throat> he certainly... <laughs> he certainly... He certainly... He certainly... He certainly... I don't know. Fuck it. He's certainly animated and more than a little exhausting. Have no fear, if you collapse on the ground, I will carry you gently onwards, like the frailest of blushing maidens. Well, there's another image I'll never get out of my head. Tybia. Not fond of him, but at least he doesn't expect you to hold up your side of a conversation. <laughs> Good plan. If you say so. Absolutely. What are these? A foul-smelling liquid pours out of these spouts to the rest of the valley far below. Its mist feels cool in the bright sun. I'm ready. <laughs> What's that? A faint humming emanates from these two statues. Absolutely. Abso fucking lutely. And what's that? A patch of darkness hangs before you, like a black spot on your retina. Except it doesn't move and when you move your eyes. Looking into it is like looking into an abandoned cave. No breeze or sound or shadows stir within it, and its edges are slowly disintegrating. <coughs> Ooh, maybe I should have stepped away from the darkness. Do we have... No, we don't have used our flex skill, which we should do as Jax. That's cool about Jax. Um, law natural. Machinery. And mystic, mystic lore. I want him to have mystic. M -m 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 mystic. Okay, okie dokie. Who's that now? I am. Okay. I want to have natural law. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, mm. That's a, that's a stupid ornament. Let's give them something else. Let's give them this. Uh, uh, mm. And Tiber gets... Ooh! Maybe this one. Does he have anything else of interest? No, he doesn't. So, okay. Uh, Tiber, you are a little faster then. I mean, plus one in cipher use skill? No, we don't use that many ciphers. Hastened movement speed evasion, 15 on attacks. And he's got the flex skill. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's good. Sucker punch, that's nice as well. Energize, that's okay, but unnecessary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And these here are just some oddities that I picked up. Over the course of the game, hmm, let's use this item. Maybe it does something. Um, I want to know what you are. Who am I again? No, we have <laughs> broke, uh, broken the cube. We can't use that, we can't use that. We can, we can use the Chroma Vulum. Red like an eye patch, and nothing happens. Damn! I want I want this to have an um, to have an effect on something, but I don't think it will have. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Touch a beat. Ah, no, we've done everything there as well. 
Now that we have done the... No, you get a flex skill and you want to be the mystical dude. All right. All and you right. get to be the ma 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 machine dude. Yep. Ah, no, intimidation. Everything's going to be all right. Right? Or, or not. Yeah, well, now he's machine law. Well, fuck it. Okay. Okay. Let's look into this nothingness. Ready. The dark pad remains. Try to determine the nature of the darkness, please. Natural law. Anyone has got more? No. Then 90%. 9% should be enough. It's not! You can't recall ever seeing anything like this before, and you're not sure what it is or what it does. As far as you can tell, it's just a floating patch of darkness. Let's try that again. Mm. Mm. Though you have never seen one before, you are pretty sure this is a living thing. The name Minim comes to your mind. Minims are usually paired with another of their kind, and it is possible to travel rum from one to the other through the void that connects them. This one, however, seems to be dying, and the void within it, within it has no other exit, as if it had lost its mate. You also notice that the disintegrating edges of the darkness are blowing away, like ash or pollen. You can actually catch the flecks of darkness in your hand, but they dissolve away like black snow almost immediately. When you move closer, however, you accidentally breathe in several of the flecks. You stay very still for a few moments, listening to your body. But nothing seems to have, to have changed in you. Neither good nor bad. Probably the flecks dissipated in your lungs just as quickly. Should we step into the darkness? Oh, apropos darkness. That's that webcam thing here is the opposite of dark. Uh, and now I have to repair that again. Okay, okay. Well, that was quick and easy. Just keep it there way and turn down the blinds. Blinded by the blinds. That's looking better. Okay, let's step into the darkness. The darkness surrounds you. You are whipped by it as if by a wind. It is a swirling vortex with no way ahead and no way back. The opening you passed through has vanished into utter blackness. A hail of tiny objects batters you in the dark, thrown by the wind. Rocks or bones or drit you cannot tell. Then something large and sharp slams into you, and you wrestle with it for a moment before realizing it's a skeleton, though not human. As you try to shrug it off, you feel an object in its hand. You pry it free, and the skeleton falls past you. Then the wind lofts you toward a bright spot in the darkness and you tumble back out of the opening you entered, clutching the stolen object in your hand. A stim. Four users. Phew. That's the perfect drug. The Zod syringe contains a liquid that moves on its own, regardless of how it's held. The needle is pristine and adorned with strange symbols. When injected, the liquid inside grants a momentary and pure clarity giving a significant boost to a single great challenge facing the user. Okay. Step into the darkness again. A blocked portal, okay. But I'm thankful that it spit us out before just killing us. Some webcam fixing here, just, just Give me a second, give me a second, please, just... Ah, that's enough, that's enough. That's good. 
Okay, nuts going through the black hole. Um, maybe we should, or maybe should we just look what that is? See what that is. A sliver of darkness hangs before you, like the entrance of a cave, except there is no cave, only a tear in space. Within the darkness you see the glow of stars, and a cool night breeze wafts past you, carrying the scent of desert flowers and the echoes of sounds you are not hearing around you. If you step through that darkness, you might go anywhere, or maybe nowhere. It could be nothing but a shadow. Examine it. The cool air that sighs through it seems to follow you. The shadow does not change, no matter your perspective. You have the discomforting feeling that you are, your attention on it has drawn its attention to you. That it is somehow examining, analyzing and assessing you. Stupid son. You see what I have to work with? That's... Just not nice. Not nice from the sun. Um, but maybe we can. Ugh. Uh, no. Ah, ah. The opposite way, of course, of course. Okay, what? What's? What's worse, the see-through shirt or the that thing there? Maybe we can. <gasps> Okay, I'm sorry. Um, well, what else am I supposed to do? Ah, let's just keep playing. Just keep playing. Um, walk into the darkness. You step into the darkness and it envelops you, then dissolves you into twinkling motes drifting in a spare of light. Spear? Spear, I think. The light carries you through a black void, weightless, bodiless, selfless, toward another patch of starry sky. Then suddenly, you are somewhere else. Here I am. You wouldn't have followed me here, would you? Persea! Ah! She's the... Why not? The girl... You remember the stalker, Omadon? We... And successfully, I think, diverted him from her tracks. It looks like somebody meant to add to this platform once. That project has since been abandoned. Sure enough. What is this? A large upside-down pyramid floats before you, lit from below by a soft white light. It is made of weathered stone, but you can see lights and hear faint buzzing through the cracks in its crumbling facade. Examine it. You study it from every side. There's no inscription to explain why it was erected or by whom, nor is there any obvious way to interact with it. You do notice that the light from inside the crack seems to follow your hand as you slide it across, so perhaps it is reacting to you after all. Examine it again. A faint scent, something sweet. Try to figure out how the pyramid works. Tybia can help with that. Ninety five, seventy five. Let's try seventy five. I can always retry. At least in this case, I think. You slide your hands across the pyramid, following not the cracks, but the symbols and etchings on its surface. After a great deal of experimentation and not a small amount of luck, you discover a specific pattern which causes the light to grow in intensity. As it does so, a soft warmth envelops you, refreshing your body and mind. As you feel better, however, the pyramid seems to grow more dim. You stop, not wanting to waste the pyramid's obvious healing power just yet. It should be safe for a time when you really need it. Yeah, so I wasted that now, but... What, what can I do? I could reload, but I don't want to. Ah, or is it... 
No, it's got nothing to do with my light. My light by light. Maybe if I just put the light right into my face. No. Okay. Okay. That's what you get when you don't have a, a production team helping you. I don't think there's anything I can do. I, okay. I, ooh. Or maybe there is. Yes, it will be. It's not. It's a little dark here, but that's okay. That's okay. Let's continue. I've done nothing. Leave the pyramid. Per se, you can. Re ooh, loot. <laughs> step by step. Ooh, baby. On it. Uh, per se, you can. Be rest assured that Omadon will not find you anymore. He was not even looking for you. You recognize this woman from the description that Omadon gave you in Sargus Cliffs. This is Persea, Omadon's lost love. She certainly doesn't appear as confused as Omadon made her sound. Instead, she's studying the necropolis with a frustrated expression. Persea, isn't it? A man named Omadon was nowhere convinced him to give up. You what? She says, whirling around, her eyes are wide, pale circles. And you're certain he hasn't followed you anyway. She studies your face and relaxes. Thank you. You have no idea how much you've helped me. She turns back to the necropolis. Damnable cultists. I need to get back inside, but I can't risk... She catches your eye. Never mind. None of this is your concern. You've done more than enough. This is something I need to handle myself. Are you sure, Persea? Can I help you? I guess no. She's just muttering along. Okie dokie. Blob of three. I... think I know why he's called that way. On it. What's up here? What else is up here? There's... Oof. Crisp, pungent water issues from an inhuman head. There's nothing further up the slope to indicate where the water is coming from. If that's even water, you people. Ooh, what? You are... Are you thin or are you... You are... Something's not right there. Be very sail runner. Don't mind if I do. A recent landslide has closed off what once was a pass out of the valley. We will get to them in a second. These packs are left out of, but appear ready to leave at a moment's notice. They smell faintly of herbs and ozone. Herbs. Got to be another way out of here. Okay, let's talk to Beerus Brunner. 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 This androgynous, androgynous, andro, andro, ah, uh, you know, woman, projects an air of fearsome will. Her muscles are thin and wiry, and her body screams of sharp edges. She seems like a human stiletto. Her head is shaved, and she bears the tattoo of a cast off on her scalp. Never seen you before, she says. I'm a Baracel, Baracel Brunner. She starts scanning the cliffside. How long have you been awake since he moved out? Out of your body, I mean. How do you know I'm not the changing guard? She gives you a hard glance before scanning the valley again. Changing guard knows me. Knows what you'll get if I find him incarnate. So you're not him. Anyway, was on my way to Melia Vest with a mess to a reckon, but the portals are blocked. The cowards heard someone say the sorrow's hunting again, so they locked the doors behind themselves. Parge will get a message later. I need to return to the endless battle. Tell me about Parge Reckon. That's... Parge Reckon is... We heard, we've heard the name before in Tasha's Mayor. 
when we helped Matkina kind of sorting her thoughts and her memories and when we got and uh, when we um, kind of repaired, repaired her, her mind but Matkina's not with us so that doesn't matter mm. tell me about Pash Reckon she flashes, she flashes a quick look of surprise oh right you knew Pash is commander of the first militia took up the mantle keeping our cursed sire's forces contained smart woman tough why would you find the I thought the first was dead. She is. Pash kept the name in the first's honor. She doesn't care for the glory. Besides, our creator's cocked. Fighting him's the best bet. Using the first's name reminds everyone why we fight. Why would you fight the changing guard? <laughs> He's going to kill us all if we, he gets the chance. He wants to erase us. Thinks that's the way to stop the sorrow. We're not his children to him. More like broken clones, byproducts. He'd never sacrifice himself, but that's because he's the only real person in this world. In his motherfucking world. Uh, why would you change the hammer? What's the message? Maybe I could deliver it. Endless battle intelligence, not for you. Let's talk about something else. Fine, but make it quick, will you? I need to get out of here. Tell me about the endless battle. Why keep fighting? Makes us stronger, faster, deadlier. More of what we are strips away the dross of life and makes experience shine. Peacetime life is dull and worthless. Like watching life go past through a veil. War clarifies life. Makes us better. Endless is a good thing if you keep that in mind. What can you tell me about Mila Vest? She stares at you flatly for a moment. You feel a tickling at the back of your mind and she shrugs. See for yourself if you can get in. They've locked themselves away. Think they are going to find answers while they are tucked away from the world. Place has its uses, though. Yeah, true. But it's mostly a boat hole from the world. Death comes for us all. Milaves is just a place to prolong the waiting. Uh, you're going to back to the endless battle. She points. I was looking at the pass to Colne Village. Also a place in Tasha's Mare when we... Well, the Makina story. But it collapsed. Doesn't seem to be any way over these mountains either. No matter. I'll find a way. She glances at you sidelong and sneers. <laughs> Sooner rather than later, I think. Is that a threat? What's cowardly about keeping the sorrow? Out of Miravest. Hasn't found them there for hundreds of years. But now they say it's time to close the doors like it's going to traipse in. Been telling them it, that if the sorrow tries hard enough, it'll get in. Can't stop that kind of power. I'll be seeing you. Let's talk about something else. I will be seeing you. No, you won't. I'm done looking for a way over these twice damned mountains. Gonna find a different way out of the valley. Been real good talking with you, though. The tone in her voice makes you question the veracity of that statement. Wait, you leaving? Let me ask some questions first. I have no more questions. Farewell. Good. With that, she strides off. Bye bye, Barasail Brunner. I did not like her. Uh, collapse, collapse. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking lutely Hey, you. People. Maragali, pay attention. I assure you that I am aware. Assurances are fine. Actions are better. Show me. One moment. Okay. Uh, let's save. We haven't done a hard save in quite a long while uh assurances are better no that's wrong fuck it um should we talk to Thalana Margareth Luca Merajali or Denovan Ross hey Denovan the man looks up at you momentarily before looking away into the distance at nothing in particular he takes a drag on his smoke. <sighs> his presence strikes you as odd, as if something about him were trying to inspire dread in you. Hmm. What's your name? Denovan Russ. He flickers a gaze at you and then stares off into the distance again. Tell me again. 
He says nothing. What you doing here? Trying to get home. You see that woman? That's Thalana. You got questions? Yeah. What you doing here again? Talk to Thalana. What can you tell me about the valley? Nothing. Just dust and memories. Farewell. Mm-hmm. Okay. Luca Merejale. Ah, let's talk a little bit. The man is busy reading a strange device, an elegant square of some kind of metal. Odd letters and images flash by on a reflective screen embedded in the square. When you draw near, you notice that the device is plugged into his arm with a long silver wire and one of the man's eyes is mechanical. Uh, greetings! His voice is kind, though it buzzes like a rattling sheet of synth steel. I am Luca Merajali. He gestures with the book. Sometimes I read in the older tongue. I uncover great knowledge this way, for instance. His metal eye stutters and clicks and a tinny voice emerges from the pad. The formal education of the young begins in utero with nervous systems uptake, system uptake inhibitors and microwave transmissions to the developing fetal brain. He clicks it off. You see, I do not know the species to which this refers, but I begin to know of them. At any rate, what can I do for you? What was your name again? Did I not introduce myself? I did. I said, greetings, I am Luca Merajali. Perhaps your memory storage has been corrupted. He seems concerned. Tell me about yourself. And tell me why it's so dark in here. <laughs> I... I love and hate my webcam. Uh, 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 uh. Let's give me some color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a red beard. Fire, that's a red beard. That's my name. And do... Oh, no. Uh, wrong setting. Scoozy. Uh, scoozy. Uh, default. Uh, that is uh, looking pretty shitty. Eh, 340. Okay. Let's continue. I have spoken my name already. The knowledge of my character is thus very important. I was a soldier. I traveled with my friends and in my travel... The friends travel to our home. Or at least this is our plan. He leans close. I admit to concern for my friends. They seem trapped in the past, paralyzed. They are not as they were when we set out. He gestures to the mechanical extrusions on his own body. No, to be fair, am I? Um, anything else about yourself? I am unwilling to commit personal details to a stranger. I have told you what I am willing to share. No more. About the valley. It is a dry place. I taste the water that bubbled up nearby. It was alkaline and induced strange, induced strange visions. My new metabolism protected me from the worst of it. Had my friends tasted it, they might have died. He looks down at his metal pad. We have found no bodies, nor anything of value. All is quiet, but this is a waypoint, not a destination. More about the valley? I would not remain here long. It is inimical to life. Your friends are different. They were full of hope once we and a dozen others set out from our home. In Aldea, west of Sagus Cliffs, not uh, to find fortune in the endless battle. We joined a recruiter in Sagus Cliffs and enlisted with the army of the Changing Guard. We thought we were prepared. 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 We were not. We were in trenches. We fought with bolt throwers, energy weapons, and detonations. The first day saw half our friends obliterated by a rogue particle wave that emanated from our side of the battlefield. And then we woke again in a new reality. Our memories of the old world intact, but our body sold, except for Timpo, who was half dissolved in this new reality. So it went incremental gains as a whole, with certain consequences carrying, carrying into new lives. Sometimes they would undo all our day's heroism for an unseen advantage, other times we'd lose a friend forever. One day, I was caught half out of a trench, the air exploded above us, and I burned. The new reality did not restore me. I spent some weeks on the... But... So... You're dead? I spent some weeks under the care of Chayagens. When I awoke, I was as you saw me, and our other friends had been killed. Thalana and Donovan reacted very differently to me. They say I too have changed. I don't know. I know that I no longer fear. I do not remember much of emotion. I recall the fear and horror, but I do not recall its taste. And when I spoke to them, they agreed that it was time for us to leave, to leave before we became these forgotten names lost in the flux of worlds. 
Aha. Oh dear, your memory issue seems to have worsened. I am Luca Merejali. Uh, I don't know if that... The good thing about accents in science fiction games is this doesn't have to be a, an Italian accent. It's just an accent for Luca Merejali. Because I don't think there are any Italians left in one billion years into the future. Um... Okay, farewell, safe travels. Thalanamakerev. <coughs> you see a slender woman covered in worn brown ropes leaning over the fire. Ooh, you might have heard that. I'm sorry. I would give anything to destroy this sun. Who needs it? Who needs the freaking sun nobody it's overrated it's hot it's bright and no one likes it you see a slender woman covered in warm brown robes leaning over the fire a cowl pulled low over her head her skin is a dark bronze color mm. you to interrogate me she pulls back her cowl enough for you to see that her long hair is more silver than brown and the years of life on the road are apparent in her face. She looks weary and exhausted except for her eyes, which burn like golden fire. I'm Thalana Makerev. What do you... Her eyes are light on your tattoo and she hisses. Skist. You bastards are all over the place here, eh? Look, I can't tell you anything, all right? We're done with fighting. What you talking about? She looks confused for a moment. You're a cast -off. So either you're here to drag us back, or kill us. She turns to her side and pauses, as if listening to words that you cannot hear. Then she responds. No, I suppose you're right. Still, he's a cast-off. His lip curls with distaste. More detritus from the changing guard's arrogance. More damage caused by cast-offs. Who are you talking to? My man. That reminded me not all castoffs are endless battle, but Timbo wants me to be careful with you. People have said they are not there because they can't see them, but they can't see you. So let's not have that conversation. So, are you here to kill us? Tell on us? I have no part in the endless battle. <laughs> all right. Good. Sure. We'll answer anything we can. Tell me about yourself. Me, Denovan, Luca, Tim Bozart, and all the rest. They're my crew, my men. We're just trying to find a way home from the endless battle. We came through Cone, but... She waves a hand at the pile of rubble. It's not exactly a forgiving route, just trying to figure out where we go next. Her sleeve slips with a gesture. You can see that her skin does not simply look met metallic. It is metal. She catches you looking and tucks her sleeve back down, annoyed. A prize of the endless battle, one of the reasons I left. I used to think I'd earn glory there, thought my nano skills would propel me high. <laughs> Only room in that exalted air is, is for cast offs. The rest of us bleed while you lot laugh. That's why we got out. What are you doing here? Camping? Trying to figure out our next steps, came through Cone with reluctance and decided it wasn't the best place to plan. Thought we'd get a clearer perspective down here. Instead, there's some sort of cult war going on. We've got to leave sooner rather than later. She nods her head as if receiving compliments from an unseen audience. Um, don't put yourself again. Ba -ba 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 what you doing here again? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Picture check. Oh, good. Mm. What can you tell me about the endless battle? <laughs> oh, no. No, no. It's too much. Too much horror. She shuts her eyes tight and shakes her head. When she opens them again, her eyes are cold. You want to know about the endless battle? Talk to my crew. Hear it from those who ran. Why they ran. Then maybe I'll tell you what I think. Can't say I blame her. 
Horror puts it far too lightly. Um, why won't you talk to me? Mm. Where are Timpo and Zad? She closes her eyes and pinches the bridge of her nose. If you can't see them, it's no fault of mine. Frankly, they're lucky they don't have to talk to you. Um, is it safe here to sleep? She chews the question over for a while and then shrugs. It's safe for us, she says sourly. For you? She eyes her companions and they give a slight nod. We can make it safe for you. It'll cost, though. Hundred chins. Uh, forget it, I had other questions. All right. I talked to Luca. Just Luca. If you can get more than one of them to talk, maybe I will too. Okay. Denovan Russ. Let's talk to Denovan Russ. Miron Giankians. He's staring at the distance. Thalana said you're deserters from the Endless Battle. He stops breathing. The smoke falls from his nerveless fingers and his face goes slack with horror. With terror, even. He starts shaking and a single sob breaks from his throat before he snaps back to reality. Whoop! The ghost gravity. The flat expression settles back onto his face and he picks up his dropped smoke. He takes a deliberate drag and only then does his tension ease. No. <laughs> what was the question? Anything? His breath hitches, but he controls his reactions this time. No. See it yourself. Hmm. Okay. Thalana? Is that enough, the no? I try to talk to Denovan. Good enough. They were normal people once. Ordinary thrill-seeking kids. Look at them now. Most was. A group of people marched in with their artifacts. Gravity, light paths, time banners, and marched back out. Endless battle is like that, but going on for centuries. Think of what it does to the landscape. Think of what it does to the psychic terrain. Think of what it does to your friends. She waves at her nearby companions, her gesture continuing to colleagues unseen. Ah. And when... Hallo, ein Kaninchen! Hallöchen, Popöchen! Das ist mal ein sabbernder Mops, oder? Und da sehe ich das richtig. Puh. Almost funny. Oder so. Almester. Sounds like Elminster from Baldur's Gate. And D&D in general. Um, wie du vielleicht gesehen hast, englischer Stream heute, aber kannst Deutsch tippen, wie du willst. Um, und ich werde auch auf Deutsch antworten, wenn du möchtest, oder auf Englisch. Mal gucken. Wird sich halt so ergeben. Heute Abend Fusi, ne? 21 Uhr, bist dabei! And when you're vermin to the people who run the war, when you got no hope to survive, and you can feel realities collapsing around you, when you see wormholes open up and monsters walk through, when the air is toxic and the ground melts and you feel your mind assaulted, but it's not personal, it's not someone who wants your destruction in particular, you're just inconvenient to them. Your death is another number, a way to measure their success. It's hell. A business like hell. And you did it. Castoffs. You could stop it if you wanted. But you don't. Or maybe you don't care. I mean, when you've made statistics of your enemies, faceless foes whose existence you can't erase without calm. Qualm? Qualm? You're not just hurting them, you're hurting yourself the way you see the world. Soon everything is conflict and pain. All that matters is your success and you've killed yourself and you don't even know it. She wipes a tear away. It ruins everything. Every one it touches. No! 
Also kein Fussi. Ah, okay. Oder was? Oder, oh no, Englisch. <lacht> Knirchen, Kaninchen. Ach. Oh, juckt. Okay, I think that's it. I think she will tell us anything more. Okay. Farewell, Luca Meregialli. Let's talk to Luca. I offer greetings again, okay. Nee, alles gut. Gut. Um, Frankreich, ne? Wird schwierig. And Thelana says you're deserters. He frowns. Yes, we have left our post, but I do not believe we have deserted. I believe we have become aware. If the battle is endless, then our struggle means nothing. If a struggle means nothing, why should we continue to struggle? I don't think that one is really, I don't think that really hits the argument. I don't think it, it's a valid argument. I think that's a good point in reality. I mean, the endless battle is so, if it's endless, it's senseless. So why, why fight it? And it's not their cause they're fighting for. They're fighting for the changing guard and, or the first, the first cast off. I think that's a good point. We thought so as well. Okay, the, the game wanted to pull us into a philosophical argument with him, but I really just agree. I'm sorry, game. I'm sorry. Anything again? And anything again? No. Äh, Kaninchen, möchtest du eine kleine Zusammenfassung, worum es überhaupt hier auch nur annähernd geht in diesem Spiel? Absolutely. Ich versuche so kurz zu machen, wie es geht, wenn du möchtest, oder du bist einfach along for the ride und äh, wir gucken mal. Perseia matters, okay. I'm ready. We boys fly, girls, walk into the dark. Uff. Why, of course. Ooh, that's the 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 pattern we saw at the crime scene of um, Weedle's murder, the thing we investigated in the underbelly in Saga's Cliffs. Ah, okay. Also, Kaninchen, wir sind in der neunten Welt. Bam. Um, hier, guck mal, kommt so ein Journal. Gibt's einen Codex? Ich könnte dir das vorlesen, aber ich versuch's schnell zu machen, weil, wie du vielleicht siehst, ist es ein bisschen was. Um, wir sind in der neunten Welt, the ninth world. Das ist die Erde, eine Milliarde Jahre in der Zukunft. Viele Zivilisationen sind auferstanden, abgestanden, um, wie ein schales Bier, wie ein prasselnder Sekt, auf und ab. So, um, also eine Milliarde Jahre in der Zukunft und wir sind ein, einer der Cast-Offs. Wir sind sogar der last Cast-Off. Was? Wieso Cast-Off? Weil es den Changing Guard gibt. Ein unsterblicher Typ, der irgendwas vorhat, von dem wir noch nicht genau wissen, was es ist. Ich schon, ich habe schon einmal gespielt, das Spiel. Ähm, und der ist unsterblich, weil er seine, seine Consciousness, sein Mind, also sein, sein Bewusstsein immer wieder in andere Körper schieben kann. Und sobald er aber einen Körper verlässt, kommt in dem vorherigen Körper ein neues Bewusstsein. War hat er wahrscheinlich am Anfang nicht so geplant, hat er vielleicht noch nicht mal gewusst, aber jedenfalls ist es so. Und wir sind eben auch so ein Körper. Und wir haben also diese ganzen Erinnerungen an das, was der Changing Guard vorher gemacht hat und auch, was er halt in all seiner Zeit gemacht hat, aber können es nicht ganz so zusammenpasseln. Also es gibt immer so kleine so Glimpses in die, unsere alten Erinnerungen, aber wir wissen gar nicht, so, wir wissen halt nicht alles, was der Changing Guard weiß. Wir suchen also zum einen ein bisschen nach diesem Changing Guard oder generell eigentlich nach der Frage, wer wir eigentlich sind. Ne? Wie wir alle. Ähm
Cool. Nur noch in den Ofen, das klingt vorzüglich. Ich hoffe, es wird so, wie du es dir vorstellst. Es klang auf jeden Fall schon mal richtig gut. Ähm, Feierabend, herzlichen Glückwunsch. Also doch nicht nur fünf Minuten. Aber naja, so ist das halt auf der Arbeit. Ähm, so. Wir sind also am ganz am Anfang des Spiels irgendwie mehrere Kilometer von der Erde runtergefallen und pff, direkt in unsere Resonance Chamber. Und in dieser Resonance Chamber, die ist eigentlich quasi dafür da, um cast wie uns wieder zu reparieren, oder jedenfalls kann man das damit machen, wir haben sie aber kaputt gemacht, weil wir reingefallen sind. Ähm und seitdem suchen wir die Person, die sie reparieren kann. Und diese Person ist wohl in Miel Avest, wozu der Eingang hier in dem Valley of Dead Heroes ist, wozu man in die Necropolis reingehen muss, um dann wie in dem Film Cube ähm, ganz viele Türen zu öffnen und irgendwann diesen Eingang in Miel Avest zu finden. Miel Avest hingegen ist so das, ähm, das Sanctuary, der Haven, also die, der sichere Hafen, wo viele von den cast of sich aufhalten. Und da sollen wir auch Mesov finden. Und Mesov soll unsere Resonance Chamber wieder auf zusammenbauen, damit wir endlich complete und heile sind. Und wie du vielleicht gemerkt hast, wir sind Kilometer gefallen, trotzdem nicht gestorben. Wir sind ziemlich unsterblich. Ähm, aber es gibt noch manche Sachen, die können uns killen. Oder wir können auch zum Beispiel eingeschlossen werden für die Ewigkeit und das ist natürlich auch nicht so schön. Ah, ach so, direkt losgelegt mit Essen vorbereiten. Du bist eine speedy Köchin. Congratulations. And I have to agree, Cube is... It was exactly my kind of horror. I... Maybe I, th I think I've mentioned that before, but my perfect horror is I had a dream once and that still the, the nightmarish nightmare that I ever had was in the, in the house where I grew up, or in the flat, uh, in the apartment, and I stepped into the living room and from there I could see the, the balcony. And I looked out of the window onto the balcony and there I was. I was again there. And that's always the question in, in this kind of horror. If that's me, who am I? And which of one is, of us is real? And what's happening? And there's one scene in Cube that does exactly the same thing. And so, the, so time or a similar horror is, I think, was, was it Interstellar? Or this time shift when they went onto the planet and they aged there they didn't age on the planet but the people left in the space station they did age for s countless years and they had to wait years before they in their mind only some hours on the planet got up again that's whew. so i understand your nightmares shiroxi now let's continue i hope kaninchen um that you at least got an idea of what kind of world this is. Um, like I said, one billion years into the future. So there's so much technology that feels like magic, but it's not, it's technology, but really what's the difference? So this is where we are. And we can see the glowing liquid seeps out from cracks deep within the central hill. And this symbol is painted everywhere, so much so that the air is thick with a coppery scent of blood, both dry and fresh. And there's Blob of Three. Shut up! No, you shut up! You sleep with crack worms! Above! Sideways! Good question, Shiroxy. Blob of Three. This corpulent mass is almost too large, but slowly you realize It is three beings somehow melded together into one. A fleshy jumble of three faces on a single head protruding from a shapeless mass of a torso. Two of the faces track your approach while the third mutters under its breath. When it speaks, the three voices blend into one buzzing, angry harmony. Tell us who you are! Tell us what you want! Do you also seek the mass? Did you climb the leaning obelisk here in the valley? Held aloft by Saint Proverbius! The third face begins cursing and drooling. Slimy Jolian, wizened, hate them! C -c -c Cold and red p p It trails off as if dazed. When it resumes, it's looking in another direction entirely. Ill! So ill! Um... 
How did you come to be this way? We climbed the leaning obelisk to seek the mask of Prosper. Everyone should climb the obelisk. We entered the portal. We emerged on the other side as you see as a maze surrounded us, over which the painful shadow of a deity was cast. It was a labyrinth of straight corridors and right angles, full of traps, puzzles, and monsters. At last we emerged and now dream of the w w way to return to optimize our ex ex experience. Again? Mm -hmm. What are you? An astute question. We are three. A glaive, a jack, a nano, but missing one. We, we cry, cry a thoth. We seek knowledge <laughs> here in the, the, the valley. We pursue the wisdom of the ancients in this f f noise. <laughs> Fallen age, we assess. We judge, but humanity is on the d d d d d d decline. It is only through purity and adherence to the old w w w ways that we achieve enlightenment. Well, if you're looking for someone with wisdom, look elsewhere. We scoff in the face of wiseness. We laugh at danger. We we lost the train of thought. No matter. The blob stares at him, incredulous. You have the aura of a hero and the mind of a simpleton. Can your lineage truly be s s s so solid? Okay. You need a fourth. What do you mean? A fourth to join us, to complete us, to square our circle, someone to sing to us, to unite us, <laughs> just someone. I'd normally volunteer for anything, Otis says uncertainly, but I think I'd rather not become a blob with them, if that's all right with you. The faces pull away from each other, trying to ogle him from every angle. Brave, strong like us, but unwilling, the first face says. Name another, snaps the second face. The third one giggles. Mm. A minstrel, a bard, would that help you? Yes, his voice would soothe his w w w words. His leadership, history, could understand the l l l markings and valley. The second face says, Need one who is similar to us, who knows songs of power. The first face replies, there are none like us, none. We are pure and pure. The first face, third face gibbers profanity. You don't understand its words, but its meaning is clear. It hates everyone and everything but itself. Okay. Tell me about this mask. The mask of Prosper, the truth, sight, a treasure for the knowledgeable, a useless crap for those who will not see. We know its truth and its secrets are ours, not for the weak, not for the stupid. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, can you tell me about the area? Place of ancient knowledge, a place to rest, recover, think, discuss. The memorialists have helped to locate and understand, but they are being supplanted by the new. The third face mutters, hate new. The head nods vigorously and proudly. The second face says, the new leave us alone, they Fear blob of three. The third phase adds, As should all, we are prestigious. Mm. Hey, what? Why that answer? Okay. Um, what did our last cast of mean with the minstrel, a bard? Does he want to sell Tybeer into their existence? 
Um, I think we should ask this question nicely. The strange creature reacts savagely, thrashing and fading. No! No! We are <laughs> happy this way. Happy. The conjoined faces look anything but happy, and its straining limbs are practically tearing it apart, but the blob's tone suggests that you're an idiot for wanting to help. This form is perfect, l l like the forms of the ancients need only a fourth to c c c complete us, but... Well... The third face sprays a fine mist of saliva and phlegm across... Phlegm? Phlegm? Phlegm, I like the word, across the other two. You are fools! You have lost the way! The three faces begin to bicker and squabble in an incomprehensible tongue, and one of them bites into the blob's exposed flesh. The other two howl in rage and begin gnashing and howling, occasionally snapping bloody chunks out of their own flesh, creating wounds that heal as soon as they appear. Okay, I think I'll just... You'll be back. Uh, okay, blah blah three. Okay. That's a cat. Rising before you is a tall and tapering obelisk crowned with the carved stone head of some elegant sharp eared animal with six eyes. Wrapping around the obelisk are bands of engraved hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs. Examine the stone head. The carved head mounted on top of the obelisk stares out into the distance, its eyes empty and mournful. The hieroglyphs. Hero... Hiero... I don't know. Except for four stylized depictions of the same sharp-eared animal that tops the obelisk, the pictographs make no sense to you. Mm, okay. The base of the obelisk? The base of the obelisk is smooth, untouched by any weathering or other troubles that seem to have eroded much of the other ruins in this place. It sits in a pool of acrid liquid. The liquid smells foul and caustic, but the obelisk appears undamaged. It's unclear how much more of the obelisk lies beneath the pool. The statue's head seems to move until its eyes stare directly into yours. They are still mournful, but no longer empty. A faint, beckoning glimmer shines within. You turn to your companions, but they don't seem to notice that anything strange has happened. Again, the base. Look into the statue's eyes. A wave of dizziness overcomes you as you gaze into the, the statue's eyes. You are no longer facing the obelisk. Indeed, you are no longer human. The tail of the dead lark in your mouth drags along the ground as you creep through the dense foliage to the temple. A lark is a kind of um, lizard. You peek out through the Gandu fronts and see the old monk, Nimu, shucking how parts on the weathered steps. You pad out to greet him and the grin, and he grins toothlessly at the sight of you. There he is. Uh, there's my brave hunter and with a gift. How thoughtful. So he's old, uh, old monk. Oh, okay. She is. Fuck it. Um, you drop the lark at his feet and arch your back as he strokes your fur and adjusts your collar. But your work isn't done, sweet girl. There's larks plenty in the grain room. Bring me a dozen more before I finish these hows and I'll give you your favorite nibble. A dozen larks is nothing to a hunter of your skill. You pad off to the, grain to the granary, ready for battle. The owlisk reappears and you realize your joy was remembered only. We were a cat! A cat memory. Ooh. Doesn't have anything else for me. Another wave of dizziness. Okay. You watch from the undergrowth, terrified, as the followers of the bird, bird god pull down the stone statues of the great ones and chase the monks from the burning temple. Heathen! cries the leader. Their leader. Worshippers of false gods! Kill them all! A bird man sees you. He shrieks. It's a tool! We must kill it! The monks hide their souls in the little beast. If we don't wipe them all out, the monks will return as strong as ever. 
You turn and bound into the jungle as a mob of angry men crash in after you and the obelisk fills your vision again. A Katuro. So that's what this creature is called. Another memory. You watch from a low branch as grave robbers tear up the stones of the ruined temple's nave, looking for the old catacombs. Their leader sits on the stone head of a fallen statue, patting it and stroking its pointed ears. He laughs. <laughs> This is what the old monks worshipped before the Gerudi wiped them out. The prince of the Katurl. They say his big ears hear all the secrets ever whispered within earshot of any of those six-eyed pests. You hiss at the insult. He looks up. <laughs> There's one now. Hasn't been a monk alive around here to tame a Katurl in a hundred years. He chirps at you. Come here, little one. Let me see that jeweled color of yours, won't you? Looks like lovely workmanship. You give him a disdainful look and climb further up the trees at the, as the obelisk returns. I'm ready to learn something new. Anything else? You watch from under a gandu bush as a father and mother drop double armloads of spring wood in the middle of the temple ruins. Then sit and mop their brows as their th three children begin stripping the stalks of their bark. Plenty to build with our... Build with? Out here at least, says the father. And we need all we can get, says the mother, without a perimeter fence to keep out the bowels and the skull hounds, and the skull hounds will be dead in a week. What about the logs? One of the children cries. <laughs> the father laughs. Pray to Goonie, daughter. Maybe he'll send one of his servants for us. He's the prince of all, Katrol, you know. Your ears prick up. At last, you are wanted. It's time to hunt. I'm ready to learn something new. The eyes of the statue fade, though they do not go out entirely, as though it has div divested itself of a responsibility. Why it did so remains a mystery. Revisit the memories. Okay, all the same. Let's leave the statue. So this is the last of the Katurl civilization, or the monk civilization with the Katurl pets. Nice of us to remember them. Oh, she did something great. I think, I hope I can still put that together. Sweet potatoes, peach, goat's cheese, um, honey, thyme, rosemary, So, it's kind of a um, Kartoffelauflauf. Und ich finde, Kartoffelauflauf ist doch eine gute Idee, oder? I think that's the kind of inspiration that we needed. Um, we're ready to learn something new. The other ones aren't, so let's use this. Increase stat pools. One speed, one intellect. Confirm. New abilities. Lucky combatant. Blindfolded and upside down, you'd still hit your target. You're just that good. Oh, more ciphers. Ambush. Ah. Good, good. So, blind people. Or oh, stay hidden. Good advice. None can prepare themselves for your vicious ambush. You leap from the shadows to deliver a devastating... Surprise attack. Next. I can choose one ability. No fake cheese. Ah. We really don't? Didn't you eat... Some fake cheese yesterday? Or was it the last? Mm hmm. That we have. Inspiring Shiroxy. Inspiring Shiroxy. Um, okay, one ability. Train without armor. Mm-mm. 
Blank the enemy. Nah. Hmm. That's at least something. Mjelgic dust. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. You blow a dry handful of nanos from the river and a tiny bit of swamp to the mind, blowing a tiny bit of agnum. Analytic attack. We regain health. Hmm. Worms devour their way to fresh air and return to you, bringing the gift of life. Maybe um a potato salad, cutie cat. Um, we that's that's really how we felt at the moment too, Shiroxy Sh and Kitty Cat. Um. But Gorgonzola, really, that's something I still miss. Now that you mention it, but, well, on the other hand, there's so much other food that's good. So, yeah, it's... Am Anfang dachten wir auch immer, das geht nicht ohne, das geht nicht ohne. Und dann geht's doch ohne. Nach ein, zwei, drei Monaten hat sich dein Mund einfach so verändert, dass du denkst, also deine Geschmacksknospen, dass du den ganzen Kram gar nicht mehr brauchst. But there are very nice vegan uh, feta alternatives that we have tested so far, and they are always good. I really can recommend the feta, feta alternatives. And for the cheesy taste, we use Edelhefeflocken. Hefeflocken, ne? Also, nicht Haferflocken, Hefeflocken. They, Hefeflocken mixed with um, crunched cashew uh, cores. And that's some kind of pa parmesan, parmigiano. Um, yeah. Okay, which one will I use? I just like the 5% bonus. I think. Uh, or, or train without armor. But I'm... I'm attacking from the far anyway, so on the other hand, they can shoot at me too. Mm. That sounds... Nah. But it can flank my enemies. Nah. I, with, my, uh, with, um, with my companions, I flank my enemies anyway. Three damage really isn't that much. I think I just take the versatile effort. Yeah, sorry. Next. Mm. I don't know what the picture shows, but cutie cat, you know I I love every everything you cook, so um, I'm all for it. That's me, deception. Ah, I can't ah, use more perception or natural law because I'm at two anyway. Already. Anamnesis, no, stealth, title affinity. Title affinity. I can't level that. Okay. Mm. Persuasion, deception. I have type for that. Mm. Maybe stealth. Maybe that's a good idea. 
Hmm. For endurance, for more health, or concentration for hmm, better artifact gedurance. Yeah, I, I use the concentration. Nicely done. Nice, nice, nice. Nice and stein. Yes! Scrambled eggs made of tofu. That's... That's true. Um, yeah, you have to... You can really fuck up tofu. It's it's not when you know how you how to do it and just pump it full of uh, with spices and and herbs. It tastes great. And there's also different kinds of food, uh, tofu. There's silk tofu, zain tofu. That's um, I think mostly what you get at the Chinese restaurants. And there's also Räucher tofu, smoked tofu, um, which again has a different taste. And uh, there's there's good tofu, there's bad tofu, and there's bad and good ways to cook tofu. So yeah, don't underestimate tofu and don't give up on tofu, Shroxy. Try the tofu. You will not regret it, I hope. You don't like Zayden tofu. Ooh, that's unexpected. I don't have any chili, olive oil, timian, salt, pepper, <laughs> marinade. For then it was like, I never spiced it. In general, I feel that marinade, mayonnaise, no, dass so eine Marinade generell, egal worauf, letztens beim Grillen auf ähm, äh, Süßkartoffeln gehabt, die Marinade hat auch fast nach nichts geschmeckt. Ich finde, Marinade bringt nie so viel wie äh, That's me um, hitting the bottom of the spice glass, vial, um, as spicing it directly. That's always, I think, that feels more um, success-oriented. Okay, uh, what's what happened here? Um, nothing, really. We just talked to a cat, and now we will continue with... Uh, exploring this Valley of Dead Heroes. The glowing liquid seeps over. Uh, we yes. saw that already. Golo and Nutley. I think you just killed a person. Can that be? Buddy over there. We'll get it when we come back. Golo, you're seeing things that aren't there again. Of course it's there, Nutley. It's, it's just not here. We've been over this. Here's the only place that counts. Yeah, though you said the same thing five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to Nutley, Nut, Nutley and Kolo. There it works too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Just don't give up on tofu. It's, it's hard to do it, but don't give up, Shroxy. I beg you, eat some tofu. Also, Saitan is good as well. Or just, you know, vegetables. You don't need all that. Sometimes you like, of course, there's nothing that speaks against it, but sometimes you don't need it. Distracted? Disturbed? This cultist mutters a reply to a question you did not hear. He barks a laugh to a quip that was not told. Indeed, he seems only loosely aware of anyone else's presence. It brings the cleaver down just inches from the other's hand. Will you watch what you're doing? You nearly severed my arm instead of his. The air around him becomes hazy as he smiles. Sorry, didn't catch that. Too much going on. The two cultists break off their conversation as they notice you. The man, big, raw-boned and unsettlingly unfocused, steps over the corpse they've been hacking up and raises his butcher knife. You again, he says, glaring at you. I know. And without that crazy rat at this time. Good. You haven't got a chance without her. 
What redhead? The one like me? Stop two of my lines so far. But she's not in this one, is she? Have you met before? <laughs> Fought you three times so far walking through here. Twice that redhead did for me, but I still put my knife in your neck in every stream. Whichever way it goes, you're done. You can see into other realities. I see everywhere, meat bag everywhere! I don't want to fight you. He laughs darkly. Then you shouldn't have stumbled past me. Mm. Not easy to find good tofu in a dorf. <laughs> yes, that, that, that I think is true. Typhoon tofu. Uh, right? So there's no point in doing it all over again. Why waste the time? Ooh, I like that. I'm more deceptive than type. No? Okay, so that's uh, 80%. And intimidation is 50. So let's deceive him. Um, let's give it the best shot. I don't want to fight them. Vivera, vegana Speck. I never had vegana Speck by Vivera, I think. We had many different stuff from many different companies, but Speck, I think, is not one of them. The big man blinks, then scratches his chin with the back of his butcher knife. That makes sense, I guess. As they turn back to the body and continue to hack it up, the female cultist looks up at him. You sure about this, Colo? They still look alive to me. Shut up! Nutley. Just stay out of our way! Get away from us. Okay. I think I confused the voices there, but that's really not important. Um... Silk ribbons and banners flap softly against stone. These decorations are recent, perhaps several years old, but like everything else here, they've been forgotten. What? Ah, these ribbons? Maybe? Ah, these ones. Okay. It's so bright in my room right now that I don't really see them. Flexi! <laughs> I... I uh, I think Flexi so really just sounds very um, cute to be a Flexi. Go. Mm -hmm. I think there's more here we can check out next time, or should we? No, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do this. Let's see what's here. At least get around. The ground here, not um, up there, but down here at least. Don't mm, mind if I do. Blob of three, yeah. Well, can we just step on there? Oh yes, we can. There's stairs. Okay. Of course. Oh, of course. What's this? On it. Sea piracy? Oh, a sea piracy, I think, with an A. Um, I've not, I didn't watch that. But it sounds interesting with this effect, uh, if it had this effect on you. We um, watch different documentaries on Netflix. Um, what the Health, Cowspiracy, and a third one. And I think, I always think, the bad thing is, and the stupid thing is, the third one, I think, was the best, but I always forget the name. Hmm. Um, I've watched it a long time, but never came to it. Oh, oh, so you, ha you have heard of it, cutie cat. I, I said, what the health, cowspiracy, but the third one I forgot. Hmm. A tall wire and... Oh! One, for example, is the one from, or oh, that's sponsored by Joaquin Phoenix. 
or Joaquin, I don't know. Earthlings, or, or, or Earthling. That's a tough one. That's the one you sh you don't show your children in order not to um, to traumatize them. But I mean another third one. <laughs> But yes, Earthlings, that's one, that's the fourth one. A tall wire and metal frame stands on top of a synth base. The base contains dozens of carvings in a foreign script. Synth is plastic here in Numenera. The frame has been cunningly devised from strange materials and within it, colored lights curl and intersect like smoke, dancing in a wavering helix. The lights occasionally combine to create human figures, which dissolve in a second or two without ever resolving into distinct features. They do? I don't see that. This was the traditional memorial place for our village. The carvings, I mean, the contraption, I built it. <laughs> he laughs a little, he laughs a little, a little, a whisper of humor. I don't even know if all these people are dead, but I built it for them anyway. Good to know, I've never had this conversation because I never took uh, Elegant with me. What happened to them? An accident. A terrible accident. What kind? He gives you a long, slow look. Someone found a device. A frame, really? Or a weapon? Someone activated it? And then my people were gone. I've been looking for my people ever since, following the trails I could find. Trying to find any clues I could find about the frame, who made it, what it's for, but I couldn't dig up anything, and I couldn't find the traveler who caused the device to be activated. Oh, I thought that he was it. Okay. Problem is, the traveler is hard to find. Slippery. People know about him, but they don't know where to find him. Maybe we'll have more luck in Mila West. Maybe then I'll get some answers. I guess the traveler is the changing guard. A half-smile plays on his lips. They must know a lot about the changing guard. I appreciate your help getting there. Come on, we've spent enough time here. Fine. I we have not. I'm ready. I'm always ready. Yes. Now. Ah! Okay, I didn't think that something would happen. Um. Hmm. Okay. Um, food choices. Yeah, I think that's the one I like the most. Michel Siviask. I appreciate the chance to stop by Orman's monument. Been too long since I visited. I. Ha! Huh? Too bad that I get, didn't have the chance to ask the other questions. For example, why he built it? Mm. I've got to keep you happy? No, Elegern, I'm sorry about what happened. Shock regi registers momentarily on his face, replaced quickly with a short smile. Appreciate it. Come on, we've got to get to Mila West. Tell me about the village again. A valley, I mean. Oh. Yeah. Talk about you. Too bad. Are you going up? Okay. Ah! Damn it! All right. I hate not being able to ask him the other questions, but on a stream, I force myself to play this way and not reload the game now. Interact with this puddle of pee. Bubbles rise from the pool before you, and its barren edges are crusted with a white rime. The acrid reek of the water makes your eyes tear up. The rime and reek around the pool suggest that the water has a dangerously high alkaline content, and would be dangerous to drink or even to touch. Examine the pool. Despite the bubbles and deep color, the water is crystal clear, and you can see down into the depths of the pool. There's a brassy metallic globe down there. Cake with rhyme, but otherwise whole. Unfortunately, it is too far down to reach without diving in. Dive into the pool. 
Yeah, Tybee has quick fingers, hasn't he? Okay, Tybee, do your worst! Or best, really. I want that thing! Yes, success! You dive into the water and your eyes instantly start burning. Your body is aflame, but you kick down, determined, and scrabble for the globe. As soon as it's safe in your hands, you kick to the, for the surface. You're screaming in pain as you climb from the pool. After agonizing minutes, you're able to pull yourself together enough to m examine the globe. When you do, you discover it holds a treasure trove. Ooh. Pelicid wa wrap. Wa 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 wrap. Um, ooh. Ooh. Ah. This wrap is made of an airy fabric that is dull in hue, but shimmers effervescently with a slight silver light upon closer inspection. It is extraordinarily soft and slightly cold to the touch, imbuing its wearer with an enhanced intellect. Some old stories claim that some coldness seeps into the wearer's personality, taking a part of their warmth and humanity. Servants Slipknot. Savants Slipknot. <laughs> Um, at first glance, this appears to be a crude arm bracelet woven in the shape of a hangman's noose, the kind of item a macabre child might make. Close examination of any of the three cords used in the weave twists the perception of the viewer, making that cord appear to grow thicker while one of the other two thins and fades from sight. By breaking the knot, it is possible to absorb the object's powers. It's a cipher. Nice. Oh, nothing else. Leave the pool. We drink the water maybe next time because this really just kills us and uh, it's our way to sleep here in, yes. in this place. Do I still have my flex skill? Oh no. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course. Oh, we, let's talk to the phoenix. Rise like a phoenix. The man looks nice enough and seems unassuming at best, but, and this is the strangest feeling, it's almost as if he doesn't exist. As you try to focus on him, a sense of dread builds in you. You're not afraid, exactly, but you know you aren't safe. You want my name. It's been long since I spoke it. Let's see, how about you call me Fence? <laughs> no, that's terrible. Hang on. Things, Foins, Phoenix. Yes, that's it. Phoenix, call me Phoenix. He steps forward and puts a hand on your shoulder. You've come here. Perhaps you obey the cause of the tombs and give me what I need. I tell you, I need answers. Someone gave me a note. It said to come here and I would find my answers. I would find the truth, but I can't understand this note. His eyes burn, literally, though his face seems untouched. What use is power if I cannot understand what is the purpose of my power if I cannot see ask me I do not know <laughs> if you ask others for help others what do others know of my experience what do others know of my reason but perhaps you have some comprehension. Let us explore these questions. I'll remember that. If you can show me that you know, then I will share my knowledge with you. So, let us talk. You will ask me your questions, and with them you will share your insights. Ask your questions. Hmm. He rubs his chin and stares intently at Phoenix. You don't want our answers, do you? I want your wisdom. Aha! Uh -huh. Can I see the note? New joke, yes? You have not yet proven to me that you have the inquisitive mind that can unlock its secrets. Why don't you remember your name? Names are a construct of consciousness. But is there some fundamental importance to them? Or to consciousness itself?
If the importance is what we make it, then it's not fundamental. But we are supposed to ask him questions, aren't we? So... He bows his head. A fair counter. I, okay, Phoenix voice. <clears throat> A fair counter. From what I have seen, life continues in many places, in many worlds, and consciousness has mediated itself, mediated itself out of existence in some species. I cannot say if it is important. I cannot say. Perhaps we might. Are you from this world? He pauses, frowning. It is familiar to me, the lines, the curves, the structures. But it is like a poor sketch of the world I remember. I see its textures, its strokes, and I see the medium on which it is drawn. But I can lift the sketch and see the truth beneath it. I... I don't know my origins. Tell me about yourself. I have decided. My name is Phoenix. He says the name as though tasting a new wine. So his name is Phoenix. He holds up his hand, and for a moment you can see light fading through it. I am a seeker? Is that how one would say it? Yes, I am a seeker. It is wisdom. Wisdom I seek. He closes his eyes and starts laughing. <laughs> All the things I've found. As I snap open, the structure of the world is not as you imagine. What you see and feel is nothing more than the varied interactions of fundamental forces that apply rules to subsequent large pieces. Those pieces become what we call matter, what we call meat, what we call reality. He reaches out to touch your shoulder and his hand, hand passes through you and you feel nothing. He reaches out again and at this time his touch is cold. It is fire, it is acid and starshine, but you are undamaged. Enlightenment comes from within, he whispers, and he begins to cackle. <laughs> Does it come from without? Oh. Um, ooh, it looks like my head is smoking. Um. Hmm. I think you need the input to have the output. Yeah, both. It can, his eyes gleam, find answers within, let another show you the path. Both lead to surprising destinations, if you let them. Again? Mm -hmm. What you doing, huh? I seek. I was given a note. A strange note, a note that told me to come here and that I would find the answers I need. Something about him pulses, an almost subsonic beat, and you stagger slightly. Anger creases his bow. I hold it and I study it, I read it, and I do not understand it. He points a finger that cycles through the colors of the rainbow. So, how do I learn it? Find out who sent it to you. It arrived from out of time, a dimension where I cannot see. He crosses his hands. Yet. Though I believe I, believe I might. Someday. What you doing here again? Okay, okay, okay. Troll from the cultists. He smiles. Trouble. Not for me. They have come for me many times. They do not leave. The fact that he stands in the middle of the valley, alone and safe, supports his story. Why not? They cannot threaten me. They try to touch me with their material. They pass their blades through me. I touch them in return and then they are gone. Their forces return to their fundamental states. I think I'm finding my voice here. Um, can I see the note now? You have the mind of a seeker, not merely an explorer. Yes, you may take the note. He passes you a piece of engraved synth. 
Return if you are able to find my answer. This ragged synth square is engraved with scrolls and symbols, presumably some kind of writing, but it is mostly unfamiliar to you. Phoenix says the note told him to come to the Valley of Dead Heroes and that he would find the answers he needs. He gave it to you because he has found no answers, but he has not so far. He hopes you will find them in his place. Although the engraved symbols are mostly incomprehensible, four numbers are written in the truth. On one on each line of text. One, five, three, and five. We'll come back to that later. Morning, morning! In the morning. Hexy, Bexy, Schmully, Bexy. I'm sorry. Hallo! Morning, morning. Ist ein bisschen spät für 17.50 Uhr, finde ich. Aber macht ihr nichts. Aber, Hex, eigentlich ist gerade auch schon wieder Zeit, dass ich ausmache. Ich mache jetzt schon 20 Minuten länger, als ich eigentlich sonst tue am Dienstag. Heute ist doch Dienstag, ne? Uh, Hex, heute Abend Fusi, ne? Schlund um neun, äh, sieb, äh, 21 Uhr. Gegen Frankreich, wir schaffen das. Wuhu. Ähm, abgesehen davon, gucken wir nochmal kurz hier weiter rum. Und dann, glaube ich, können wir noch kurz ein bisschen talken, aber an sich ist das Spiel dann vorbei. Für immer. Nein, nicht für immer. Hmm. Tell me yourself again. Nothing. Okay. So, we've seen this, this, this. We haven't gone through that. We've spoken to Colo, Nutley, and... Ooh. Oh, no. You remember Blob of Three and his mask and incline or what he said? Sure we will do that the next time on th 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 Thursday. <laughs> okay, dann... Viel Erfolg, Hex, viel Spaß beim Nintendo-Stream und vielleicht sieht man sich morgen um 19.30 Uhr für Gothic 2 die Nacht des Rahmen or on Thursday from 3 to, well, 5.30, uh, where we continue with Torment, Tiles and Numenera and see what Blob of Three wanted us to do here on this, this year. Let's save. Blobby Incline, I don't know. And... Mm. Ja, stimmt, Hex. Das war, glaube ich, irgendwann mal auf Mixer, wo, als wir darüber geredet haben. Aber wie kam wir denn damit? Ich glaube, ich habe dich einfach gefragt, ob du Fußball magst, ne? Richtig. Ich weiß. Oder, oder, nee, wusste ich nicht mehr, muss ich zugeben. Aber mir ist auch, also ich bin auch nicht der große äh, Fußballfan. Ich mag Fußball, aber ich bin nicht der große Fußballfan. War also eigentlich mehr oder weniger einfach nur bla bla bla. Und ähm, bei dieser WM Vierte geworden dieses Jahr. Das heißt, du bist Eishockey-Fan? Ist das korrekt? Well, I'm talking to Hex about um, sports, my greatest topic. Um, I say bye bye, adios to Shiroxi. Um, right, ah, ice hockey. Hex is ice hockey fan. Okay, so, bye bye Hex, viel Spaß mit dem Nintendo Stream. Bye bye Shiroxi, guten Appetit, mal schauen, was Cutie Cat heute zaubert. Bye bye Captain Green Bear, and bye bye Kaninchen, and I will not watch, uh, look who's online as well, because I respect your anonymity. So, goodbye. Vielleicht, also übrigens auch noch krass, vielen Dank, dass ihr zugeschaut habt. Ich hatte noch nie sieben Zuschauer an einem Dienstag hier um 15 Uhr. Also seitdem ich Torment auf diesen, since I put Torment into this spot, uh, Tuesdays from 3 to 5.30, I've never had as many viewers as today. So, I humbly Thank you and say goodbye. Have a nice day. Keep on rocking and bye bye.